dude, get over yourself. How many times have you heard someone say that to you? Get over yourself. Well, they're actually quoting Catholic doctrine uh, the, the, or a Catholic spirituality where we learn to have a certain disinterest in who we are. And today we got John Leonetti, who's written the book, The Art of Giving, Getting Over Yourself. We'll be right back with a Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're going to have a, a good ride today. We're, uh, we're paddling out with uh, John Leonetti, who's written a book called The Art of Getting Over Yourself. And I just want to read something from the Catholic Catechism. Uh, it's Article 226. It means making good use of created things, faith in God. The, the only one leads us to use everything that is not God only insofar as it brings us closer to him and to detach ourselves from it insofar as it turns us away from him. And here's a quote from St. Nicholas of Flouet in the Catechism. My Lord and my God, take me from everything that distances me from you. My Lord and my God, give me everything that brings me closer to you. My Lord and my God, detach me from myself to give my all to you. It means trusting in God in every circumstance. There's a certain need that we have to be disinterested in our own agenda, to be disinterested in uh, what we're going to get out of something. Uh, that's kind of a mercenary approach to loving God. What God wants is a heart that's devoted and abandoned to the fire of his love and let to, and to be consumed by love to be consumed by his love wasn't it flames of fire that fell on the apostles to be consumed by love and let and let people see god and not us uh, when they see our ministry you know when you're riding a really big wave i mean a really big wave like in hawaii you might be over half a mile out people don't really see you they see the wave and they see this kind of carving white foam of the, of the trail of your board as you carve through that wave. And what they see is the wave. And the fact that you're carving that carve on it, you're drawing that line on it, cutting back and staying in the, the, the vortex of that wave. The fact that you're doing that lets them get a sense of the dimension of the wave. But still, they're not looking at you. They're looking at the wave. And when you come in after an incredible session, you know, come in and after a contest or just free surfing out there, people may come up to you and say, dude, that was a great wave. They never say, dude, you were awesome on that wave. They say that was a great wave. They give glory to the wave. That's what we're talking about here with John Leonetti, the art of getting over yourself. Hey, D John, get over yourself, dude. I've heard it. I've heard it a number of times. I'm married to a wonderful woman. <laughs> so you, so it inspired you to finally write a book, right? <laughs> yeah, I, actually, it's because of her that I named the title uh, what I did. It, it, you know, it's a short story, but I was out speaking, and basically, you you've, you you travel. I mean, you know how uh, hectic and chaotic it can be. And uh, I had a number of flight cancellations this particular trip, um, flight delays. I mean, it was like if anything could go wrong, it went wrong. And I finally ended up getting home and it was one o'clock in the morning and um my wife she she answered the door because i forgot my keys i mean i'm, I'm mm -hmm. telling you anything mm -hmm. that went wrong planes trains and automobiles it sounds right. like <laughs> and and i sat down and i i couldn't sleep and my wife kind of sat next to me on the couch and i was just complaining i was going off about everything that went wrong in my life uh the last 24 hours i mean and, and you wouldn't believe it and my wife she looked over at me and she said get over yourself <laughs> and and I was so mad when she said that, you know, like I, I slept on my other shoulder that night, you know, like turned away from us. I didn't, I didn't want to hear that. That was like, so I thought inappropriate for that moment. But the next morning I woke up and I'm like, that's it. That's it. Like the last 24 hours, all I've been thinking about is me, 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 me. And, and that's, that's not what this life is all about, even in our sufferings and in our trials. And, and she taught me something that day and it really, it, it inspired the book. We're talking with John Leonetti. He is, uh, he does parish missions almost every week 
uh, and he uh, is in Des Moines, Iowa. A little bit cold there right now, and he's at least it may not be when we air this show, but it is a time we're filming <laughs> it. And he has, and he's believe it or not, he is the host of the weekly radio show on the let's see the Catholic. What's Iowa the name? Catholic Radio. Iowa yeah, Catholic Radio in Des Moines, right. Iowa. And the, the name of the show is the John Leonetti Show. So, so, if you, so if you're trying to remember, it's John, J-O-N. First of all, that's hard to remember, that there's no H. John, and then Leo, like, King, uh, like Pope Leo, and then N-E-T-T-I. So johnleonetti.com. Hey, John, so um, people with big egos have a lot more to get over, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they got to climb up this life. big ego and get on the other side of it, right? Right. I mean, the, the the Lord sets the bar right here. You know, he 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 sets the grounds of discipleship. The foundation of uh, of, of discipleship is right here in dying to ourselves. And he said it to his his disciples. He says, "If you want to come after me, if you want to be my disciples, you now will take up your cross daily and follow me." I don't and, get to take know, a day I, off. You don't get to take a day off. And look, I, I get it. Like, you know, we, we sit at mass and we hear the words from uh, proclaimed, you know, from the uh, the deacon or the priest uh, of the gospel. And, you know, sometimes we're thinking about other things or sometimes we don't quite catch something. I, I just I, I could I can't be clear enough. The apostles, they understood deeply what what the Lord was was communicating to them because they knew what the cross was. They knew what it symbolized. And it this symbolized was, what? What does it? This what was is, Caesar's rule. This was his reign. This is the cross was the greatest force of execution that the Romans could implement. Uh, and and they they surrounded. I mean, they lined the streets with crucified. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, with the crucified. I mean, in, in fact, it was so gruesome that they would stake. Um, uh, they would say guards by these uh, crosses as people were, were hanging from these trees because the people that were hanging from the trees would be begging bystanders to kill them, to shove spears right. into their hearts. Right. And so the guards, they wanted it to last as long as possible. So on average, about 24 to 48 hours. It was the most excruciating form of death penalty. And, and it was I also... use that word. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I use that word purposely, excruciating, because that's where we get it. Excruciating. Yeah. Out from the cross because you know the crucified would have to push themselves out from the cross just to take a breath as their vital organs were shutting down slowly. Mm. So you know, and our Lord walked ten football fields before that with that cross on his back, uh, and and went through another form of execution, uh, which was the uh, uh, scourging of the pillar. So I mean, surviving all of that, dying three hours, hanging three hours on the cross tells you just how bad it was. But our Lord's trying to communicate something to us there, I think. And that is that right here, the paradox of it all is that when we lose ourselves, and God goes first, God shows us what that looks like, we find ourselves. You want to be first, be last. You want to come after me, take up your cross daily and follow me. You want to find your life, then you will lose yours. This is the, the paradox. Jesus flips everything upside down for his disciples and for us. I love what doc, Dr. Ray Grandy says. You know, don't you love Dr. Ray? He's such a oh, crack yeah. up. He's Hilarious. hanging around him. It, whenever I see him, I always gravitate to him. We and yeah. just sit there and hear his same old terrible jokes. But, <laughs> but you know, he has this saying: "It's not life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's all about ourselves. It's life, yeah. liberty, liberty, and the pursuit of holiness. Yeah. And as we pursue those things, everything else is added. Is added. But we have to. We have to pursue God. You know, there's and, and the time of tribulation in our life too. Talk about that dark night of the soul. Let's talk a little bit about that and what work that does in our spirits to detach. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, look, detachment isn't easy, and this isn't going to be uh, easy at all. It's, it, for most of us, it takes a lifetime. Um, we see this you know, in the, in the lives of the saints. Uh, many saints, uh, this was a constant converting of themselves. Was, uh, the conversion process is, in fact, the conversion process. It's a process that the Lord asks us to go on. But if we're not working at it every day, um, then we're not living the life that he wants. And, and let me just be clear about something for a second here, because um, you, know, you and I, we are not the problem. Anyone who's listening right now, you are not the problem. You were created all good. You were created. The highest point of God's creation is the human person and God's image and likeness. The problem is, is when we order ourselves to everything that's less than us. Created goods, as they may be, when we order ourselves, when we begin to worship or make gods out of everything that was there to serve us. 
So what this book is about is to reorder us out of the chaos and reorder us towards the one, the only one who's greater than us, and that is Almighty God. That's where we find our life. And in doing so, we kind of lose ourselves because when I make my life about me, it happens, I become selfish, greedy, egocentric. Um, I, I become isolated because it becomes about me. I don't need you. I don't need anyone else. It's kind of an illusion of self-sufficiency. Um, you know, and, and the Lord didn't create us for that. He created us for each other. He created us for himself. Um, so that, that's, that's key here. This is about a reordering. That's the conversion process now towards the worship of Almighty God, where my life becomes about him, where I die to myself so that now he can reign in me, as Jesus said. Uh, excuse me, as St. Paul said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I rid myself of everything that turns me inward on mm. me. Again, selfishness, ego, greed, all of that. And now reach to God. Well, they say that, that that's what hell is, is that inward, downward spiral, spiral of all, it's all about me. I remember one time, you know, there's moments of that infusion of God's love when you're in prayer, that unexpected infusion. And I was praying, and I was, had my arms raised, and I was saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. But it got to the point where all I could just say, John, was the word you. Hmm. You. You. What could I add to just looking at God and saying, you. 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 Not about me. Not about even the words I could say of praise. Even praying in the Spirit in tongues. It wouldn't have been enough. It was just to limit it to the one word, you. It That's is about, Aquinas, you know, right? yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, yeah. At the end of his life. Well, well, well wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't tell me about Aquinas, dude. We don't get to talk about Aquinas here <laughs> until we get back from this break, okay? Okay, got it's it. The Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with John Leonetti. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Dudes, if you go to my website, deepadventure.com, it's kind of overwhelming. We hired uh, Kickstart Media to do our new website for us. And dudes, he was like, this is going to be the toughest website I've ever done because there's so much going on there. We have Bear's Man Cave. You can join uh, the, the Man Cave, a secret Facebook group. You can't join it on Facebook. You got to go to our website. We have an incredible, really, I think, maybe the coolest uh, uh uh, store on any website that ever was. We have really cool stuff, in other words, on our website. Books and t-shirts and, and warrior rosaries and, and Benedictine exorcism rings, Benedict St. Benedict rings, and the coolest stuff there. And then you can subscribe to our newsletter and you get this show. John Leonetti, we're interviewing him right now, but guess what? If you were subscribed to our newsletter, you would get it the day before it comes out and you would get the video version of it. And if you're really cool, uh, when you go to our website, you click the Patreon link, Patreon dot com forward slash bear was Nick deep adventure you click on that little that little a twenty dollar a month gift to us and you receive the video version of our 
of our radio show months before it airs on EWTN. Not only that, you get an all seasons pass for all of the TV shows, for all of our uh, seasons for Long Ride Home, and you get the director's cut released to you the day it's done. So we released to our Patreon donors last week uh, episode 17, no, 18 of season three. Now, the first episode of season three, the, uh, number 18 of the series of our motorcycle TV show, it won't even air on EWTN for another seven or eight months. So go there, help us, join with us, be part of the pack and part of our ministry and part of our outreach. We're talking with John Leonetto, John Leonetti, J-O-N-L-E-O-N-E-T-T-I dot com. He gives parish missions uh, just about every other, more than every other week. He's very busy. He has his John Leonetti uh, radio show on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Is that how it is, John? That's it. Iowa Catholic Radio. Yeah. So they named the show after him. So it must be pretty good. And but we're talking about this his book, The Art of Getting Over Yourself. Uh, and we're talking about the Catholic concept of uh, of of detachment, of of disinterestedness. There's a scripture verse that says, "My son, if you aspire to serve the Lord," this is from. Uh, the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, it meant a lot to me at the age of 19 when I first read it. My son, if you aspire to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for an ordeal. For the promised, the promised man, Sirach too, you love it too, huh? For the promised man is proven in the furnace of much humiliation or another translation, much affliction. But fall into the hands of God and not into the hands of man for what man has ever trusted in God and been left abandoned. For as great as his majesty is, so too is his mercy. So God invites you on this journey of, of adversity. It's like as you walk, he starts stripping you of all the clutter and all the things that cling to you or that you're clinging to. And he gets you down to just imagio Dei, that good image and likeness, the apple of God's eye that he, that he sees. Uh, but so, so when you face adversity... It isn't the time to turn away. That's an altar. You never pass up an altar. Remember when Jacob fought with God out in the desert, in the middle of the night, the angel Lord fought with him. And he, he was punching and wrestling and grappling. When you're losing a fight, a fighter clings to his opponent so that the punches can't hurt so bad. So in the end, he just clung to, uh, the, to God, this theophany, this, this pre-incarnate Christ who was wrestling with him. And then he said, Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And the Lord hit him in the socket of his hip so that he walked with a bit of a limp from then on. And he blessed him. That's what this, this is what for men, this, this tribulation, this trial, this adversity, this why me, Lord, what are you doing wrong, Lord? You know, it's him grappling with you and wrestling with you and cling to him. In the end, just cling to him. Ask him to bless you. He might punch you in the hip so you always walk with a limp so you always hesitate before you go forward and check in with God before you you uh, pursue whatever pursue you're pursuing but grapple with God through the adversity and cling to him just cling to him cling to him and then uh, the mer- his mercy you'll see a tra- you'll see this total transformation of who you are you can't make it happen but you can cling to the one who can we're talking with John Leonetti John tell us more what we were ta- about to talk about the dark night of the soul and what that has how that how God uses that to help us get over ourselves your book the art of getting over yourself well I, I want to go back to what you said about Aquinas, you know, in your prayer, mm, that yeah, sorry. experience sounded really interesting because it was a lot like uh, Aquinas. I don't want to put you on that level yet, but well, maybe. Uh, well, didn't, maybe he to get, didn't he, wasn't he translated into heaven? They, you know, maybe. Yeah, he had How a vision. do you know? Maybe, maybe I was, you don't know. <laughs> they could, could up. Maybe. He, he had some sort of vision. Uh, we don't know exactly yeah. Is, but many uh, have commented that it was the beatific vision, vision of Amen. Almighty God and all of His glory, um, and and it was two weeks before He died, and or a few weeks before He died, and He didn't write anything uh, after that. We know that for sure. Um, and when He was asked about that, what what it is that He saw, he, you know, He gave He gave mention that you know everything He's written. We're talking about Thomas Aquinas here, the greatest, the smartest man that ever lived. Yeah, I mean, the the greatest mm-hmm. contributor to mm-hmm. uh, ph- philosophy and theology. Uh, the world will ever know. Mm. He said, everything I've written is but straw compared to what it is that I've And I've straw seen. is where the, what they used to throw the dung on. Right. I mean, to think that such a, a, a moving, powerful figure 
uh, in Christianity, but in the world, would, would say such a thing. What he had to see was incredible. It, 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 he, I, I think he, that was another teaching moment for him. Mm. It was all about, it was all about God. You know, it was, it was not about, it was not about him. Everything was oriented towards God. Everything was in service towards God. That's where he found who he really was. Yeah, you, 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 and that's why I said when I was having that prayer experience, I, I couldn't add or take away from anything other than just the word you. Mm -hmm. it, it just comes down to who God is. Can you back up a little bit with us and, and tell us about that type of experience in your own life? How do you pursue intimacy with God? Uh, prayer every day. Uh, it, it's, there's nothing more important than making time for God in our day. And that's how you spell prayer, T-I-M-E. Um, you said something that uh, was, was perfect uh, towards the beginning of this segment. You said um, that you don't, you don't do this to ourselves. We don't make ourselves saints. Uh, saint, sanctity happens from God, pure and simple, grace, right? Grace, and, and a nice acronym for grace that I've heard before is gifts received at Christ's expense. So remember that, gifts received at Christ's expense. Grace is pure gift unto itself. Uh, it is not uh, something that we can deserve or we deserve or something that, uh, you know, is uh, we, we merit. It is something that God does in us. God gifts us his grace. That's what holiness is. What we can do is give him permission to do that because I can say no to that, the life mm -hmm. God wants me to live, but I also can say yes. Uh, and that's one of the greatest gifts he's also given us is our free will, because if he could force himself on us, then it wouldn't be love. It would be force, and love can't be forced. I didn't get down on my knee to my wife and say, you're going to marry me whether you like it or not. Yeah, that doesn't work so my, good, huh? It, it, it didn't. It, it would not have worked well. I, I got down <laughs> on my knee, and I proposed to her. So God never uh, imposes. He always proposes to us, much like marriage. What does God propose to us? Again, the ring is the cross. We take it. We follow him. Uh, but that's the freedom. That's what God is looking uh, to do in every single one of our lives. God is looking to sanctify us. God is looking to make us holy. And what that means is we become more like him. And in becoming more like him, we become the way, what it is that he's created us to be. You know, suddenly vulnerable. Moments in your life when you suddenly are like vulnerable. You know, yeah. maybe it's a financial meltdown or you've lost a job or it's a physical ailment. I remember paddling out. The first time I ever <clears throat> thought I would die in the ocean, it was a big day. There were boulders being knocked around on the the beach, this place called Rincon in California. And I went to paddle out, and I paddled, and I paddled for about 45 minutes, getting swept, getting pushed back, finally making it out, or so I thought. And then this rogue, this huge wave came in, and for the first time in my life, I felt vulnerable. You know, And all I could do was turn my board as the wave exploded on top of me and hope it wouldn't crack my board or crack me. And, and I made the mistake of, set, of yelling, Jesus, instead of taking a deep breath. <laughs> Suddenly vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. And I you mean, become, you know, but as you, come you said to, before, mm -hmm. it's, it's all about prayer. So in those times of vulnerability, oftentimes uh, those are the times where we go to God in prayer. Sometimes those are the only times we go to God, but God doesn't want just those times. God wants every single day. So my big uh, key to this, uh, and hopefully probably the biggest takeaway I want every listener that's listening to your show right now to hear is that we have to create, we have to start that pattern of daily prayer in our lives because that's where God makes us saints. Faith without prayer is a hobby, okay? It, it, without an intimate relationship with Jesus, becoming more like him, then everything we're about is just social work. And, and the church has done some incredible social work, the, the, the greatest institution in the world, uh, but it's not just about that. It's about intimacy with God. That's where it all begins. And it funnels us into every other aspect then that the Lord is calling us to. Yeah, I just remember that wave breaking on me and for the first time, my, time in my life fe feeling vulnerable. But everybody out there he knows those that moment when I thought I had my act together. I thought everything was cool. I thought I was getting my next job promotion and then you're out of a job. Hmm. And you suddenly have to go to God in prayer. And that's good. You know, God, it's at the detour that the adventure begins. But when we make that detour, we begin to learn to walk with that limp. Is it this way, Lord, or that way? What is your will, Lord? We more and more want to be centered and abandoned to his will because that's where we know his love and his provision and the experience of his powers. We're talking with John Leonetti, J-O-N-L-E-O-N-E-T-T-I.com, johnleonetti.com. 
He gives parish missions almost every day of the every every week, and uh, is a, a author of the book "The Art of Getting Over Yourself." And he's the host of John the John Leonetti Show on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website, web store at deepadventure.com. I got two of my books there. Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul was an Amazon Prime bestseller back in the day. It's, it's a really great book to uh, give to people that are beginning their search for God. Uh, it's a cool book. It just, it just, it's, I love it. And then we have, and it, it's just a journey. It kind of parallels the concept that our, our, um, the, the doctors of the faith who talk about our spiritual journey. It, it, it patterns, the book is patterned after that, but full of surf stories and adventures and things like that. And then there's my book about the virtues, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. You can find them both at our web store. We're talking with John Leonetti. Uh, he's written the book, The Art of Giving Over, Getting Over Yourself. You know, we, I wonder, we ask people, um, we wonder why the dark night of the soul. There's a time in our lives when we want to know the Lord for what we can get out of it. You know, I need to be saved. Um, he makes me feel good. It's kind of a mercenary thing. It's a mercenary love. Oh, Lord, I'm going to love you because of what you do for me. But the time of trial and adversity, that dark night of the soul, you come to the point of getting stripped from everything, and then you learn to love God just for who he is. You know, you get beyond yourself, get over yourself. That's the book that uh, he's written, The Art of Getting Over Yourself. So, John Leonetti, tell us more. What more pearls of wisdom can we can we? Well, I want to hear. You know, you were just saying. I mean, it's really the antithesis of love. Um, you know, what is love? I, I think the best definition we have of what love is is to will the good of the other as other. So, where I want what's best for you, and I'm going to do everything I can to get it uh, to make that happen. Not because it's good for me. Not because I get a kickback. Um, you know, it's not. Uh, you know, I'm going to love you um, for my sake. I'm going to love you for your sake. That's what love is. And I think that's modeled the best in, in, in our marriage and in our family life. I think that's why God plugs us in right there, where I now die to myself in order so that you can live uh, and live at your best. So that's what we have to constantly be looking for in our lives. Love one another as I have loved you, right? This is where it comes from. God loved us into creation not because he gains anything from it. God gains nothing from you and I, nothing. Right. You know, it, it, God, the entire world, nothing gives God anything more than he already had. John Linetti, the broken man that sits on your screen right now uh, or through your radio right now, cannot give God anything he has. And if I could, then that would mean he wasn't omnipotent, all powerful. It would mean he was lacking something that I could give him. What I am is a result of a God who is love. So God in his omnipotence, all powerful, omniscience, all knowing, uh, uh, omnipresence, time and space can't contain him, created the entire world, created me out of nothing. Uh, not, not so that he could rise in glory, like the pagan stories where the pagan gods are killing each other off so they can rise in glory and gain more power, but rather so that we could have life and have it to its fullness. And not just for 70, 80, 90, 100 years, but for all eternity. With God, that's what God's love does is it, it it burns away all the attachment to sin, all the things that get in the way of that so that I can live with him in eternity where God just gifts himself to me. That's what St. Faustina saw when she was taken to heaven. You know, she was taken to heaven, hell and purgatory. Uh, and she, when she got to heaven, she didn't want to leave. She begged Jesus to keep her there. Uh, but what did she see? But God, the indwelling of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, pouring himself out into the soul endlessly ever mm. ancient, ever new. God just giving himself. And that's what we have to model here on earth. We model that kind of love where I die to myself uh, so that the other, my neighbor, can live and find life. Well, you know, what's that scripture first? For God so loved the world that he felt warm and mushy and fuzzy. <laughs> right. 
right? It actually God says, gives us himself. Yeah, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. Uh, God, um, and as you said, you quoted Aquinas, the, the love is willing the true good for the other. Yeah. Okay, that's really nice philosophy. Tell me about putting that to the test in, in the context of a family. Yeah, it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to actually live it, right? Uh, this is the hardest thing you'll ever do. Uh, Christianity is not for wimps. Catholicism is not for wimps. Um, and, and, you know, when we, I, I'm allergic anymore in this day to this kind of warm and fuzzy uh, Catholicism, I, I, you know, this uh, gospel of prosperity doesn't work, folks. It does not work. It, you read the gospel. You are reading the wrong gospel, uh, or the gospel of you, uh, not not the ones that we we see in our gospels. When we uh, you know think that this is all about uh, um, you know me getting what it is that I want, more money, more fame, all that sort of thing. Uh, so what does the gospel do? Is it rids us of ourselves? Where do we start? Where do we plug in? I think we do it in our families. I mean, that's what our families have to be. They are models of God's love. They are a microcosm of God's love. They are the, the domestic church. Uh, it is a church in your family, in your marriage right now. Uh, that is, it has to be a uh, re you know, revealing to the world what God's love looks like, which means I now die to myself every day for my wife. And that's who I took the vow to do that for. Well, what do you mean? Give me examples. Uh, here's a clear example. My wife uh, wants to watch a cooking show, and I want to watch the Cubs. <laughs> no, not yeah, that, I mean, dude. Not I mean, that. It, it, Anything it's, but. It's something as practical and as easy as that where I die to myself. You know, I remember when we were uh, first married, and it, it's embarrassing to say this. It's an embarrassing story. Well, but did it, you it, ask her if she liked the Cubs before you got married? She, she, does, she has converted. Uh, okay. It was a, a, a very quick conversion <laughs> process for her, but she, she didn't really have much of a choice. Anyway, um, no, we, uh, I remember when we were first married, and she was out running errands. We didn't have kids, uh, of course, and, and she was out running errands, and um, I was doing the dishes. And she called me, and she told me she was going to be home in about five minutes. And I was done. I was cleaning the last dish, as she said, she was going to be home in five minutes. And I sat there and cleaned that dish for six minutes. Why? Because I wanted her to see me. A <laughs> little bit of mercenary love there, door. dude. I wanted yeah. her to see that yeah. I had done all the dishes. I was cleaning, just finishing up. And she saw it. And, oh, thanks. Thanks for doing the dishes. And I felt so good about myself, right? That's not love. Mm. But what, what was it all about for me there? It was about me. It was mm. about, you know, me, me rising in her mind or, or me doing the right thing. It's all about me. It's sickening to think about that selfishness, that greed. You know, and we all have it in us. But you know what I hate, John, is like when I'm working hard, working hard at the computer, doing my work, then I oh, take a, finally, finally, I'm going to take a little break, you know, lay down on the couch. About the split second I lay down, then she walks in the door, you know. <laughs> but, you know, my dad, my dad used to tell me that he loved, uh, he loved my, my mother and father had a, such a beautiful love. He said, love is doing those small things for the other when they don't even know. They will never even know you're the one that did that. You know, yeah. and my wife is like that. There's so many things that so she does mine. for me. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it's something in, in, in the feminine genius uh, that, that they, they, they kind of model that in ways that I think guys really struggle uh, to model with. I, I really do. So I, I appreciate mm -hmm. you saying that about your wife because it's the same thing I see in my wife. She, she's just a model that she's not perfect. You know, of course not. But, but she, she, it, it, she, she does that so much better than, than what I can. I really learn from that. In the little things, I mean, like, oh, man, I'm just about out of toothpaste and then i yeah. look in and there's a brand new tuber oh we're out of coffee and then i look and there's we ran out of coffee yesterday and i go and go to make oh yeah i only had one scoop left yesterday and i reach in and there's a brand new i don't there's a million ways every day that she does these small things and that's self-donation it is that's, i mean I, I, I have there have been times we have a, a five month old right now where i've smelled him I didn't do anything about it for, for three, you know, uh, minutes. I, I didn't just kind of let it, and she smells them immediately, you know, in the room. More I than you, it, faster than you do. Right? Before, right. And she mm. just gets up and goes and changes his diaper. You know, I mean, I'll smell him. You know, he's got a poopy diaper. It's like, Oh, you know, wait three minutes. Maybe she'll notice. And boom, she notices and just goes. But it, what's so cool is when you get to that point where, um, and you know, where you would rather, there's times when I'm just totally exhausted, but when you would rather do for them, than for yourself. Yeah. You'd rather do for them than to not do anything. There's such a overflowing of love for them that you want to make their life better and easier, you know? It's just so but much you learn that, but you learn that yeah. by, by I mean, doing. 
you do and sacrificing and look i'm a work in progress i'm a mess uh, my wife was once asked how she stays married to a man who travels seven months out of the year. And she said, because he travels seven months out of the year. Yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I, I am a work in progress on this. The Lord is constantly teaching me what that looks like. But in the end, you're right. It's sacrifice. Nice and and I want to challenge yeah. all married couples out there right now. I want you to, at the end of saying, I love you. And I hope you tell your wife, your spouse, or your, your husband every day that you love them. But I want you to, at the end, add this tagline. I love you. And I will sacrifice for you. Mm, I, love I will you, love you and I will, and sacrifice, I will sacrifice for you. For and if you, you really want to turn it up, add today at the end of that. I love mm. you and I will sacrifice for you today. We're talking with John Leonetti. Um, John, do you empty the garbage? Is that your kuleana? Your job? I empty the garbage. I do that. Yes. I was under the weather. My wife, well, she empties the garbage. And it's like I, before I know it. And finally, a couple of days ago, and I was been under the weather. I said, "No more you emptying the garbage. You got to tell me when it's full, but I will empty it." It's just, it is those little things, isn't it? it We're is. talking with John Leonetti. He's written the book, "The Art of Getting Over Yourself." Uh, his name is spelled J O N L E O N E T T I. JohnLeonetti dot com is where you can get with him to have him come do a parish mission with you. This is the Brad Wozniak adventure. We want to invite you to go to our YouTube channel, dudes. We have over a thousand videos. <clears throat> we have. My Ocean Sunrise Catechism, which I do every morning at 7 a.m. bear time. So if I'm in the East Coast, it's uh, I'm, I'm usually by an ocean, and we do the Ocean Sunrise Catechism 7 a.m. Eastern. If I'm in Hawaii, it might be uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. If I'm in Ireland, it might be who knows what time. But wherever I am, I do it around 7 a.m. my time. And we when we spend uh, 15 minutes at, uh, going reading our way and talking about the uh, catechism. But all those catechisms that I've done are on our YouTube channel. Uh, we have links to all of our radio shows. We have a couple hundred radio shows up there on YouTube. We have a lot of fun stuff that we do too. So go to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and click that subscribe button so you're notified when I'm doing live YouTube or when we've got a new one that we've uploaded. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. The word aloha, the root, the main word, a uh, syllable, and there's the word ha. It means to give breath. Aloha then means to give love, to give of yourself, your very breath. When Captain Cook first came to the Big Island, came to shore, he shook hands with the Hawaiians. Bra, you know, give breath. He didn't lean forward touch foreheads and breathe. That's what, that's the Hawaiian greeting. The men touch foreheads and they breathe out of their nostrils and they breathe in each other's breath. The women put their cheek against your cheek and there's a breath that is shared. That's ha, to give your breath. That's what we're talking about when we talk about getting over yourself. This book that John Leonetti has writ written, The Art of Getting Over Yourself. It's to give your very breath, to give your life away, to aloha one another. John, how do people uh, do that in their workplace or in their ministry? Yeah, that's hard because oftentimes the people in our workplace um, or listen in our family are the people that annoy us the most. Um, and, and are you talking about me again? Or <laughs> I don't work with you Man, close enough. Oh, it's yet. all about me. I just assumed it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, oftentimes um, our, our greatest enemies are found in our families are found mm. in our workplaces. And, and I think, you know, we can uh, think, you know, the least that Jesus is talking about are those, you know, orphans in Calcutta. The least that Jesus are talking about are the people you consider least in your life. You know, he says uh, that, you know, that for which you did the least, you did unto me. 
Mother Teresa's gospels and five gospel in five words. You did it to me. And she would say that a lot. Right. Uh, the least in our life is our is our enemy. So um, if there is someone at your workplace right now that is maybe your immortal enemy, uh, that is Jesus in disguise, that the way in which you serve them and love them uh, and honor them, respect them is the way in which you are serving, honoring, loving Jesus. That for which you did the least, those people you consider bottom of the barrel, you did to me. And I, and I think a good practice at this, friends, and, and Barry, I think a really good practice at this is, is where um, we, we really kind of do a little bit more self-examining of our own sins. You know, I think if we were as horrified at our own sins uh, as we are everyone else's, uh, I think the world would change. And I think it would change overnight. You know, we are mortified by everyone else's sins, people we know and people we don't know but we give ourselves a pretty free pass. And so I think one of the best ways to be able to start this is maybe every night or even in the morning, do some sort of examine, examine your day. Um, Ignatian exercises, I really think those are important uh, to be able to do. And, and say Ignatius of Loyola, what a spiritual master here in this, is to really kind of comb over our day. Where did I, where was I furthest from the Lord? And what areas was I closest? And in those areas that I'm furthest from the Lord, how is it that I can um, both, of course, ask for forgiveness, but how is it that I can do better tomorrow? And, you know, it's, it's, it's true. You know, you read the, the writing of uh, Thomas Akempis, The Imitation of Christ, or Therese of Lisieux's book. Uh, and they both had, they, they both talk about being in community, not in a family, but in community, and how they have that sister blister, you know, that one person that just rubs them wrong. Yeah. That's where the, the rubber meets the road, isn't it, as far as... Now, it, having said that, there are times that you need to draw a line and not allow people, certain people into your life. Right, love is toxic, not passive. Right, that are just not... You know, that, I, mm -hmm. listen, I, I've had someone in my own life uh, growing up that my, my father suffered horribly from addiction to pain medication. Um, and, and we didn't just sit back and say, yeah, you do you, Dad. You know, we didn't sit back and say, oh, yeah, and, and whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. We fought tooth and nail to be able to get him clean, and praise God he is and has been now for a number of years. But, but we, we didn't just sit back and let this happen. And anyone that's ha had someone in their own life um, that has maybe struggled from an addiction or anything knows that love, you fight. You know, you moms out there, you know this more than anyone. You know, mother, mothers are ferocious. You get in the way of my, my wife and, and our kids, man, you, you're going to pay, right? Because love will do everything it can uh, and, and so for, for the other, so it's, it, I'm not just, so it's not like, anyone. Oh, you know, the, this person that's a challenge in your life and your family or at work, it's not like, Oh, the poor person. I just, you know, just, you know, you just got to love them for who they are. No, no you there's want a time when better. you challenge them. Right. right. Mm -hmm. If someone's gossiping at work, you know, you, you don't sit there and let them gossip. Or if someone's gossiping about you, call them out on it. Mm -hmm. You heard this. Call me. You know what? I don't think that's that, that's a, a virtuous thing to do is to gossip about me. And if you're saying it about me, what are you saying about everyone else? Mm -hmm. You know, I want you to be or better. Or when someone's well, speaking to you about someone else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, they, you know that they talk about you to other people, too. No so doubt. you draw the line. I remember when I was first starting my career. I was working, I'd been, you know, big four CPA firms and then worked for a Fortune 100 company. And, um, the internal audit department, and we would go down to, to have coffee break together. And I remember it's important to have that coffee break with your boss and the other people that are going to be someday making your promotion decisions, right? Yeah. But I stopped going. I remember the Lord very clearly spoke to me, just one of those moments, you're my walking man, now go walk. And I took my breaks by walking and not spending my time with them. But the reason why I, I initially did that was because they would talk in terms about women that were not consistent with my 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 vision of what of how to speak about women, you know. And my boss said, "You know what? This is our time of team building. You don't and you don't sit at the table with us because it was all men." And I I told him the reason why. And from that moment, he confronted the rest of the men and said, "We're not going to talk like that anymore. It doesn't it doesn't have dignity. You can't do that anymore." But back when I started, you know, to draw a line like I said, "I'm not going to let you. I don't. I can't be there if you're going to treat women like that." So it was it was it was. It wasn't uh, an attack, but they knew where I stood on that, and, and, and things changed. So, yeah, we want the best for others, but there, there, are, there are those people in our lives that are just work against our grain, and you see what Therese of Lisieux did. The and one, that's never going to go away. Yeah. By the way, you know, it's you, not it, like it's overnight. This is just going to you know, heal itself. It doesn't. It's always going to be a work in progress. You're mm -hmm. always going to have people that annoy you. Enemies are going to come and go uh, in your own life, but it's the constant battle. 
uh, that, that the Lord asks us to get in. And there's one way, you know, one way we can go, which is the opposite of the Lord's, uh, which is the world's, or we can just go into battle and be willing to, um, well, to make the to make you know, sacrifice. My son Shane, uh, when, from his youth, uh, you know, when people are young, everybody bullies each other, you know. But when my son Shane, in his youth, he had this unique, incredible heart. Uh, and still does, where he would look past people's faults as they would bully or attack him or, or and other things, other people. He had the ability to look past that and see their need. He could look past their fault and see deeper and see where their, where their heart was broken or where there was a problem, and he could speak to that. And I see that magic in his ability to see past other people's faults and in, or to be able to see deep into people's hearts when he does his videography. You can just see it. It comes out. He captures amazing moments that other people don't even see. We have to look. We have to see uh, when someone offends us, we need to see it as a godly appointment. Now I have an appointment to pray for this person and to do good to this person and perhaps to see their lives change, to see them come to the Lord. But it's a godsend. It's a God, it's a, an appointment. So when someone offends you, you can feel offended. But, you know, there's certain people in my life that almost every day there's, a, there's something that I do that makes me encounter the thought of this one person, and I just have to lift that person up in prayer, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, every day. I mean, and this is, this is the work in progress, folks, and this is the Christian life. If you think this is easy, uh, you, you got another thing coming because uh, I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, uh, loving my enemy is not easy, you know, and so there are the, people, go ahead. One of the good things is that, uh, you know who you are, but who your enemies are too. Yeah. You know, I mean that everyone has their enemies, but by knowing oh, what type of enemy does this person have? Is it the local police you think are your enemies or is it the local bully that's your enemy? You know, you can you can you can understand and define yourself a lot by who it is that's out to get you. You know, I know one of the things when I was young, John, I was always super happy, really annoyed people. <laughs> you know, hey, give it, uh, wrap us up now. Where you, you do uh, parish missions? Uh, yeah, uh, tell us how be, how they can reach you if they want. And what is it? What does a parish mission of yours look like? Yeah, a parish mission is simple. It's a retreat for busy people, um, hour and 10 minutes, three consecutive nights. It's called Surge of the Heart, three different talks. Uh, that's modeled after St. Therese of Lisieux's oh prayers my goodness. And Surge of the Heart. Wow. Um, and uh, so we, we really just kind of the first night tackle uh, who is God, two fundamental questions, and why does that matter? Uh, number two, the second night, we talk all about the saints, which is my favorite night of the entire mission, because that's what God has called us to be. There's no other meaning, reason, or purpose to your and my life than to become saints. And number three, we look at how we get there. So I, I, I'm a, a freak about the saints. I, I got a, a membership series uh, program called Sanctify You right now. Oh, and, they can uh, come to your website about, and 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 join and. Jo and uh yeah, yeah. I, I don't know when you're going to air this, but it will be. Uh, I, I'll be ha coming up at the end of March uh, is when I'll open it again. I only open it for a week, um, and then I just go right back to work. I open it two weeks a year, uh, so a week at a time, every six months, and uh, people can join that as well. But that's something that um, has really uh, taken off because we study the lives, teachings, and wisdom of the saints. And uh, then on that third night of the mission, basically we, we plug in, what did every saint have in common? I give three things. And then um, a miracle story through the intercession of a saint that uh, happened to my wife and I. So Praise I'd love God. to get out to your parish. I do about 30 a year. I cap it at that, but uh, it's a lot of fun. Dude, johnleonetti.com, everyone. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit Aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.